like to say it examines America's relationship with alcohol, for better or for worse. The 5,500 square foot Prohibition Museum traces the fight to ban alcohol across the country including some of those who took matters into their own hands. Carrie Nation was a woman who ran into bars and would uh, basically single-handedly destroy them with rocks, with bricks. She used a hatchet. The museum also delves into the money-making empires built off the law, and Savannah was in the middle of it from the very beginning. Not only were we the first place on the American continent to have a successful law banning alcohol all way back at the founding of the colony in 1735, but uh, we were also a major part of the national bootlegging ring. Uh, in the first three years of prohibition, the largest federal raid happened right here in Savannah. In the early 1900s, bootleggers were using large ships to bring liquor to the Georgia coast. Speedboats helped them avoid the Coast Guard and get that alcohol into Savannah before channeling it north and west with the help of some of America's most notorious gangsters. They had connections to Bugs Moran in Chicago. They had connections to Al Capone, uh, some of the people involved. So it was this massive national thing. But in August of 1923, federal agents started trickling into Savannah preparing to break up the largest known bootlegging ring in the country. When it comes time to write warrants, all of them are written out of a single room in the DeSoto Hotel instead of at the local police precinct. Uh, and so when August 16th comes, the raid basically comes out of nowhere and they indict 84 people on that day alone, over 120 indictments when it's all said and done. National Prohibition finally ended a decade later, and because it did, you can now end your journey through the museum with a sample of what the fuss was all about. Fuss indeed. Raids, yeah, gangsters. Yeah, right? Man. Speedboats. Yeah, what a time to be alive. <laughs> oh my gosh, and it's just, a, it's amazing the lengths people went to. I know. To get a drink. But it was also, <laughs> if you think about that time too, I mean, that's really all they had to kind of, I guess, mm -hmm. take the edge off. I don't know. I yeah. mean, maybe that's not all they had, but for the most part, that's something that maybe they needed during that specific time. Yeah, what it, it is one of those times. It's like realistically mm -hmm. d not that far away, but it feels so far removed right. from where we are present day. Can right. you just imagine? Is kind of how it feels. Oh, <laughs> what a what a rebel city we are! So much rich history. Yeah, Savannah would do anything <laughs> to get a drink. Well, and ironically, yeah. W w Back then, obviously the prohibition, but now you can walk around the streets with your drink. Yeah, what wow. Al Capone would say about that. I know, what, what, what a <laughs> history transition <laughs> Time to there. Be alive. Now, we know a lot of people, of course, trying not to drink, or maybe 